Hello, physics students. I am Mr. Williams, and this week we'll be talking about gravity and weight. Now, before we get started with that, let's talk about the new semester and how we can be successful. First, it is very important that you attend every live class session. They are required. You will do better in the course when you attend the live sessions. It is important for you to complete all of your work in a timely manner. Get your work done before the due date. If you want to be successful, you need to use the best practices of studying and by keeping up with the assignments. You're not going to learn very effectively by cramming information in last minute or by interrupting your learning process by doing a little bit here, waiting a long time, doing a little bit more, but forgetting about what we really talked about. So get your work done on time. Do the best work that you can do. And keep in mind, just because you quote unquote completed an assignment doesn't mean that the assignment was completed in a way that proved that you learned something. So I do expect good work from you. I do expect your work to be done on time. I do expect for you to come to live class. I do expect for you to participate in live class. I do expect you to have questions ready about what you don't understand when you don't understand something. And if you can do these things and you try your best, I know you'll be successful. So let's get started with gravity and weight. So gravitational force and weight, okay? Just two quick vocabulary words. First one is gravity. The attractive force between two objects that depends on the masses of the objects and the distance between them. Weight. Gravitational force exerted on an object. Now let's talk about gravity. Gravity is a type of force. Anything that has mass and is attracted to by the force of gravity. The strength of the attractive force is dependent on the masses of the two objects attracted to each other and the distance between them. So if you have two kernels of corn, they don't have a lot of mass. So if you put them two inches from each other, they're not going to attract on their own. There is gravity between them, but it's not enough to cause them to accelerate. Also, if you had two gigantic uh, masses, let's say you had two masses the size of planet Earth. And if you put those two planets only one inch away from each other, they would collide because gravity between between them would cause them to come together. So that's how um, mass is dependent on it. Now let's think about the distance, okay? Obviously, as we sit here on Earth, we can try to jump all we want. We're going to come back down towards the Earth because <clears throat> we are attracted to the center of the Earth. But let's think about it in distance. When you're only like 10 feet away, all right, you could be 10 feet in a tree, jump out, you're still gonna to fall towards the earth. But imagine if you were 10,000 miles away, well, you'd be floating around in outer space. Are you gonna float back to the earth or are you gonna to fall towards the earth? Uh, no, that's not gonna happen because the distance is so great that you just don't feel the gravity between you and the earth. Now, one important concept that we'll ask you about later is um, where do two objects that experience gravitational pull between them, 
where does that gravitational pull originate? Well, gravity's attraction between two objects occurs at the center of each object. So it's at the object's centers that they are attracted. Okay, gravity is a very weak attractive force. It is so weak that you cannot feel the gravitational attraction between you and your desk or you and your couch or you and your cell phone. You don't feel that attraction. It's very, very weak. So I like to think gra about gravity as the supermodel of forces, right? Supermodels are supposed to be beautiful, right? They're so attractive. Well, gravity is attractive. <clears throat> well, unfortunately, these supermodels are very, very, very skinny. They're way too skinny. They need to pick on, pick up some pounds, right? And that just makes them very weak. They may be attractive, but they're very weak. Only the Earth is both massive enough and close enough for you to feel the gravitational attraction to it, okay? Um, the sun is very massive, but you don't, it's too far away for you to feel the gravitational attraction. So although the sun is much more massive than the Earth, it is too far away to exert a noticeable gravitational attraction mm -hmm. to you. So all objects fall at the same acceleration when gravity is the only force that is applied on the objects. You're like, wait a second. You're telling me if I dropped a feather and a brick that they would hit the ground at the same time? Well, hold on a second there. There's a little bit more to it. The reason we don't observe this when a feather and a baseball is dropped is because of wind resistance slowing down the feather. So astronauts went to the moon and they dropped a feather and a hammer at the same time in the moon, right? The moon does not have an atmosphere. And so when they were dropped, they both fell at the same speed and they hit at the same time. Very unnatural to our own experience. But that's because Earth, there's a lot of air in the way and there's wind resistance. So the acceleration of an object in free fall is 9.8 meters per second squared. You should recognize that when we calculated gravitational potential energy. We used little g as the constant for gravitational acceleration, which equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Free falls when all other forces except gravity can be ignored. So you don't have to worry about that wind resistance at that point. So let's talk about the gravitational force equation, okay? Remember that a force is mass times acceleration. Here, we have force, which is measured in newtons, mass, which is measured in kilograms, and the gravitational acceleration constant, which is uh, meters per second squared. So that's gravitational force equation. Okay, now we're gonna use gravitational force and we're gonna talk about it as weight. We're gonna see this in just a moment. Even when you're not falling, Earth's gravity is pulling down on you, you stand on the floor, the net force is zero. Remember the net force is when you add up all the forces and the direction that they're going, however much is left over. If your net force is greater than zero, you're in motion. Well, if you're standing on the floor, your net force is zero. Even when gravity is pulling down on you. This is because the Earth is pulling you down but the floor pushes an upward force on you that balances gravity's downward pull. The gravitational force exerted on you is called weight. The weight of an object on Earth is equal to an object's mass times Earth's gravitational acceleration. So weight equals mass times gravitational acceleration. This is a lot like that force of gravity we just saw. It's a lot like the um, the equation of force equals mass times acceleration. Well, the acceleration here is gravitational acceleration. The force here, we're just going to call it weight. So weight is the W, capital W, is equal to weight. That's in newtons. Lowercase m is equal to mass. That's in kilograms. Lowercase g is equal to gravitational acceleration. And on Earth, we're going to use 9.8 meters per second squared. That changes if you're on other planets or on the moon. 
In fact, there are different parts of the Earth where gravity is just a little bit different. But a good rule of thumb, use 9.8 meters per second squared, and when you do the calculations, it's going to be pretty darn close. So let's do a weight, exam weight example. Calculate the weight of a 10 kilogram object on Earth if the gravitational acceleration constant is 9.8 meters per second squared. Use the equation W equals M times G. Well, what's our W? Well, we don't know. It's asking us to calculate the weight. Next, let's find mass out of this, this uh, practice exercise. Which one of these numbers is a mass? Yep, that's right. It's 10 kilograms. Now, what is the gravitational acceleration constant? You got it. It's 9.8 meters per second squared. Well, what do we need to do next? Well, we take our equation, all right, and we just substitute in those numbers. So W equals M times G. Well, for M, we'll just put 10. And for our G, we'll put 9.8 meters per second squared. And so we'll have weight is equal to 10 times 9.8. Well, 10 times 9.8, just move that decimal place over to the right once, and we'll have weight is equal to 98 newtons, because newtons is the force of weight. Seems a little strange to us because we like to say we weigh, you know, a certain amount of pounds or a certain amount of kilograms, when in actuality, if you were correctly measuring weight, you would have it in newtons or at least if we're going to use the uh, international unit. Weight and mass are not the same. Weight is a force, while mass is a measure of the amount of matter an object has. Weight increases as masses or gravity increases. Because the weight of an object is due to gravity, an object weighs less on the moon. Well, that's because the moon's gravitational acceleration is 1.6 meters per second squared. Neat. So if the gravitational acceleration on the moon is lower, that means you could jump higher. Well, you could actually jump six times higher. You could jump two feet off the ground. Well, you could jump 12 feet off the ground on the moon. Finally, Mr. Williams can do a slam dunk. All right, guys, thank you for watching. You have a nice day and stay tuned. I want to see you in class. We're going to have a great semester. Bye.